Welcome to the Land of House channel. I'm Seth. Today I have got the Viver 12 by 20 portable garage. Let's unbox this, assemble, and then take a look at it. Let's begin by opening up the box. Now I have to say that this thing is extremely heavy. I don't see a weight on the side of the box, but I would not be too surprised if you would call this uh, 80 pounds, 90 pounds or more. So definitely make sure you pick this up with somebody else because it is very heavy. On this side, we have the tarp material that goes on top of the structure to keep your vehicle out of the elements. And on this side over here, we've got all of the metal components. So let's go ahead and pull these out and get them separated. I just finished unloading all the contents of the box. There are lots of different poles. There are top supports. Some of them are three-way and some of them are four-way. Then we've got the legs over here, which will go to the ground. There are some hardware mounting uh, pieces in here. They will go around the poles. There's a bag of hardware, another bag of hardware, a user manual. Here is the stakes, a bunch of bungees, a few of these uh, ground ties, and then some rope. And then of course the two bags for the top canvas, some gloves. I'm not sure what that is yet. We'll have to get into it in just a moment. Opening up the instruction booklet, it's only a few pages long and has pictures that show the overall build of this frame. So starting with number one here, this is the top slope overlooking plane. And I'm gonna be using A, 2, and 2A two for all of this build. So what I want to do is step over here and find those components. So for instance, here is a 2, as you can see on that. And then if I move over here, here is a 2A. And so I'll be using those. And then I believe they're calling this right here just an A piece, which I guess makes sense. So we'll be using those. And then looking on the instructions once again, there are some B pieces, which are the, uh, the midway piece, this one right here. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and begin constructing this. Uh, following those instructions. I believe I'm going to start off with a couple of these A pieces, which is the metal corner piece. And I'm going to just set those in the corner to represent where I'm going to start building this. And now I'm going to grab a bag of these poles labeled number two. Get one of these out of here and place it right there. I also need one here in the middle. So I actually need to have one of these here as well. Now I'll show you the layout once I get this all set out here. I have all of the top pieces laid out. It was actually pretty simple once you got going because all of the pieces are labeled. So for instance, it says 2A right there and that goes on the outside all the way across. And then you move over here and you've got the two piece and that goes on the inner side. And then two over here, 2A. And then if you move down here, the ones closest to the end were always the 2A and the two. So the 2A, 2, 2A, 2, just like that. And uh, the four-way piece goes in the middle and all of the ends have the three-way piece. The whole system assembles by push button, which is found right here. It's just a spring-loaded push button. So this one right here is gonna go straight across the building, go down and then go up. So what I wanna do is just stick this piece into here, push that spring-loaded button until it snaps. And then I can do that same over here with this one. There we go, until that one snaps. And I will continue down the line until all of these look the same.
Assembling this portion actually was better than I expected. So each of those has a push button or pop button there. I can show you right down in there. And that just snaps into the uh, piece before it. So this one does not have a taper here. It goes into that one. There is a taper on this side, which fits into that one. And then over here, there's no taper. And that goes into that side right there. And uh, it's pretty easy, not too difficult. Just had to uh, make sure you flip those pipes around to find the correct direction that it's supposed to go in. Now that I have the roof assembled, it's time to install what's considered a stiffener. And that is just a metal pipe that's gonna go from one side to the other. And to do that, they've included these little brackets and also some nuts and bolts. Looks like they have uh, wing nuts here, so that should allow me to uh, get this done without uh, too many tools. They also included a small uh, little wrench, so I can use that here. So I'm just going to pop this onto the pipe like that, bend it into position, and then I can get this in between there. Press this bracket over the pipe. Make sure I don't catch a finger in there. Now I've not tightened down the other side yet so I can adjust it to make sure it is uh, in the middle. And then I'm gonna use the wing nut and this bolt. I can use the included wrench back here on this side to hold that in place while I tighten that wing nut on the other side. Now that I have all the cross bracing done here in the middle, it's time to move on to the legs. I've got the poles uh, marked number three, and these are gonna go down in here. And so I want to just lift up a corner and get this pushed into place. Just like all the others, it just has a push button to get it in there. I think I'm gonna stick to one side and get these done. Next up on the instructions is to install the roof tarp. I believe this is the one we want. Let's go ahead and unroll this, toss it up here, and see if this is what's going to be up here on the roof. If I find windows in this one, I'll know that it's the other tarp that we need. Bad news, it's upside down. All these little pieces right here need to be on the inside. So let me go ahead and flip this around real quick. Now in order to fasten down the tarp to the metal frame, there are these elastic bungee pieces. And these simply will go into these grommets and they go around the metal pole and just back to themselves there. And that's how it's going to be fastened. So I'll do another one over here. Goes into the grommet, around the pole, and then back to itself here with these little elastic ropes. For the long sides, instead of having to duck down inside, you can just step on the outside here and uh, feed these through just as easy. Uh, probably even easier not having to uh, bend down the whole time. So.
I just finished installing all of these little bungee cords to keep the top tarp onto the frame. And it is pretty taut now, which is good. So now that I have all of those done, it's time to install more of these support bars on the corners. So they're gonna go from this side right here up to the top. And that will help to make more tension here on the corner. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same as before, just using one of these brackets and then the nuts and bolts included. And then this right here will go on the corner just like that. Now, because you've already seen this, I'm not gonna show it again. Um, I'll just show you what it looks like here once it's done. These triangular corner braces are on now, and I think they're gonna make this thing a lot stronger. I left them a little bit loose so that I can move them around if need be, just in case one of the legs is a little bit uh, out of alignment. All right, now that that is done, it's time to put the three A poles in, and these will go onto the bottom of the current legs that you see. Now that I have the second pole down here for the bottom of the leg, it's time to get the sides of the tarp installed. Now let's see, I think this comes in more than one section. Let's see what we got in here. Yes, okay, so we've got different sides. Now the instruction booklet does not specifically say this, but I believe that these same tie downs are going to be used to go through the side here so i'm going to also put this through here all right kind of get that up a bit closer and then loop that around there um, i say that because it looks like they all match up together with the same holes so it would just make sense to have that use the same ones I now have both sides on. It's time to work on the front and back. Now I looked at these and it would seem as though they are the same. They both have a zippered entrance and so that is kind of cool actually to be able to do that. So we'll find out which side of this is going to be front and which one is back or if it even matters. Now these attach just the same as the sides. You've got to use the same bungees to get them in place. So let me do this real quick. One thing that I like about this Viver shelter is that it does not require a lot of hardware to get it up and installed. I've used other products before that were all day install events because uh, you had to have all these different fasteners and it was quite a task. I brought the eight foot ladder out so I can get these top toggles on, which means this is a 10 foot high building. Quite impressive. You can definitely store a lot of stuff in here. Now, one thing to remember is that the door uh, certainly isn't that tall. I would say it's uh, what, a seven foot door, something like that, six and a half. Velcro on the sides allows you to keep the poles cinched down to the side of the, the shelter. Each corner has this piece of fabric that has a hook on the end of it, and it will allow you to snap into the bottom down here and that hides the pole from being seen. Now it's time to insert the feet, and these are just going to slip down into this. So I'm gonna pick this up on the edge, slide this into position, and set that back down. And then these stakes are gonna be used in a little while to put into the ground. Now I have gravel, so that's definitely gonna be an issue. The second bag of hardware are some nuts and bolts that are supposed to go through the legs here to keep the stakes in the ground and allow you to use these to essentially hold things down. So stick that through there and then tighten the nut down to the back side. 
I was reading in the manual that there are sandbags included, and so that's what these black bags are for. So I just filled this one up with sand right here. I'm gonna put this over into the corner, and it's got these Velcro straps on it that will go around the pole and lock this into place and basically prevent this whole tent from blowing away in the wind. Now, if you're in a space that's very windy, probably worth also putting in some of those stakes. Uh, my area here typically doesn't have a lot of wind. Um, so I'll do this and then I may still put in the uh, little ties right here. I may try at least one or two of them to get this in here. I anticipate using this uh, garage for about uh, maybe a year, maybe less, depending on how my finances are for my uh, full-size carport. I've had the 12 by 20 portable garage set up for a while now, and I've got my truck pulled in here. Let's take a look at it, and I'll let you know what I like and dislike about this portable garage. Today has been very windy for this area, and as you can see, the garage has not moved, even though some of the flaps do pick up a little bit. There are four windows total on this portable garage. I've got this one over here closed, and this one is opened up. They just roll up and fit into this little spot right here. I probably could have rolled it backwards and that would let the water uh, go off of it instead of getting behind there. But I'm probably gonna keep this open most of the time to uh, just let the air flow in there. I may open that one up as well over on this side. So the corners for the most part come together pretty good. This little flap covers the pole, but sometimes as you can see over here, the pole is still visible uh, through the tent and there are the, the garage and there are holes there. Um, I don't think it's gonna be an issue. I probably could find a way to uh, tighten that down a little bit more, um, but it's working well. Now there are grommets here on the corners where you can put some tie down ropes to keep this uh, from moving about. So far I've not had any issues with the wind that we've seen here. Uh, I'll show you what's inside to uh, hold this thing down. Now there are also two doors. So on this side there is also a roll up zip up door and it can be stored with those ropes as well. And so you can have pass through. So if you want to drive a tractor in you certainly could do that. Now the height of this is only six foot tall and so it uh, may hit something if you're driving something bigger in there. My pickup truck drives under this six foot no problem, so that's gonna be good to get this in here. Uh, so the frame seems to be well built and is sturdy, and what I really appreciate is that all of the connections were done by these little pop buttons, and that made assembly pretty quick for a single person to put this up. On the inside, you can see out pretty good through those screens. And uh, there are Velcro tabs to hold the sides onto the poles. Now, the thing that's helping this not to blow away is this sandbag that I have on each corner. And that is uh, roped down to the top here, um, just for the extra support. Um, but also it has Velcro along the back of that bag to keep this attached to the pole. So that's worked out really well. The middle of this garage is 10 foot, so you've got plenty of room for uh, airflow up there. And of course, this truck is uh, only six foot tall, so uh, it doesn't come anywhere close to that. Now, the 12 foot sides are more than enough to get your doors open on a vehicle of this size. And I've got about three or four feet up here in the front, and I can pull that forward once I move my ladder there and this truck will be completely underneath the garage. Over here you can see there's a bunch of bugs crawling around on the inside mesh. With those windows open though, it is plenty cool enough in here, so it is passing some pretty good airflow. If you're looking to install a 12 by 20 portable garage, I recommend the Viver. I was able to install this by myself without too much trouble, took about two and a half hours to get this totally assembled. Now, there are two different types of stakes you can use and also those sandbags. So no matter what your terrain is, you can lock this thing down so it won't blow away. And it is plenty big enough to support a full-size truck. So if you're storing four-wheelers or a small tractor or bicycles, then you've got lots of room inside of this. Thank you so much for watching. I'll have a link to this in the description down below so you can check out for your very own and I will see you in the next video.
Bye.